a 2007 study with 29 young adults found that moderate doses of alcohol up to one hour before bedtime reduced melatonin production by nearly 20%. That's the study on alcohol and melatonin in young adults. A 2018 study of 4,908 Finnish participants found that sleep quality was re- was reduced by 9.3% after one glass of wine and by 24% after two glasses of wine and by almost 40%, 39.2%, after three or more glasses of wine or an equivalent amount of alcohol. Yeah. Which is really, really staggering that your sleep quality will could dip 40% after three glasses of wine. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, we see it is, we just finished this analysis actually looking at alcohol and markers of recovery. So heart rate variability and heart rate. And literally with every drink, it is just, there's a linear relationship in the decline. Like, and it is significant. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it, we're talking even one drink um, will produce clinically significant reductions in heart rate and heart rate variability. This was maybe the most compelling motivator for me to quit alcohol was when I got my whoop the first time, and then I think it was someone's birthday or something, so we went out and I had a glass of wine or something. I woke, I woke up the next day, looked at my heart rate variability, which is the mm. a measure of how well I'm going to be able to deal with stress and load mm. and all those things the next day, how well my body's going to be able to deal with life. And it was flashing red. Yeah. which is like a warning. And it, and it says on there, when I clicked on the flashing red thing, it was like, did you have a really stressful day? Mm. Are you sick? Mm-hmm. Or did you drink alcohol last night? And I felt so targeted. I, know. I was like, how does this thing know, I know that I had one glass of wine last night with yeah. my friends? Why is something flashing red with inside of me? People keep diaries on Whoop, don't they? They keep like the Whoop mm-hmm. journal, I think they it's do. called. They do, yeah. So, it's a goldmine of information, actually. Really? Yeah. What have you learned from that in terms of uh, alcohol? I imagine that's where a lot of the conclusions start. Yeah, I mean, we see a 6% reduction in next day recovery after alcohol on average. So this is, you know, one drink to 10 drink, you know, it's just basically looking at the the average is 6%. Okay, so the average of, okay. Recovery. So so if someone's having, if someone was binge drinking, they could have a 30 or 40% reduction. Yeah, but it kind of, and we we might and and that specific data point might we might have controlled for you know the the thirty drinks or you know it's it's mm. probably somewhere in the range of five drinks you know per night and and the average recovery reduction is six six percent and that's relying on self reporting right so I wonder if there's yeah. biases and what there might there might be yeah <laughs> people that had ten drinks think they had yeah. four <laughs> but I, I think yeah exactly I don't really remember how many drinks I I had so yeah or how many drinks I had. Interesting. Super yeah. interesting. The other thing we obviously drink is coffee. Yes. Caffeine. Surely there's a correlation between the circadian disruption and Yeah, caffeine. so that's definitely one of the circadian kind of, it definitely can disrupt circadian rhythms if we're having caffeine, you know, within eight to 12 hours, I would say, of when we intend to sleep. Um, it's going to impact our sleep onset, of course. Um, and even if we're all, you know, tired enough where we have, you know, we're sleep deprived, um, we might might fall asleep, but it will invariably end up disrupting or fragmenting our sleep. So we're not kind of getting into that deeper stages of sleep. We're not achieving the sleep quality that um, that is going to le- you know allow us to wake up feeling restored and refreshed. So timing of caffeine is really important. I've recently quit drinking alcohol. I think it was about three to four months ago now. Um, it was so interesting. I had a conversation with some of my best friends. I've, mm-hmm. I said this on a podcast a couple of couple of months ago, and one of my friends was an alcoholic. So he managed to um, quit alcohol and he's writing a book about it. And then as I look across the group of my other friends, none of them are alcoholics, but they're all sort of casual drinkers. And we were sat there together around this table having dinner. And he was telling us about this book he's writing about quitting alcohol. And I was sat there thinking, that book that he's writing doesn't necessarily resonate with me because I've never had, I've never felt like I've had an addiction or really, to be honest, any problem with it. Yeah. I'm such, I was such a casual drinker. I would have maybe one glass of wine a week, if that. There's probably months I've gone without any alcohol at all. So I couldn't think of a reason to quit. So really I was saying to him, is there another book that someone else could write for me that just takes those people that are, those casual drinkers Mm -hmm. that are right on the fence and just gives us a reason to nudge over the other side. And because I have this podcast, I thought, you know, I'll just try and quit and see see what the implications are for my life. 
alcohol, health, circadian rhythms. What do you? What's your perspective on all of this? Well, I I, I like to think about it. I love this the the principle of non neutrality, right? And and this is how I like to think about behaviors and and how I've kind of always thought about it is if you've got a, a, a series of behaviors, we talked a lot about about sleep um, and, and, you know, physiological things and you've got the psychological things and they're either going to support your your values, kind of who you want to be in this world or they're not. And, and I think that's the lens with which I look at alcohol, you know, in what way is this supporting my values of growth and impact and, and presence and compassion and um, tolerance, you know, the, the things that are like core to who I want to be in this world. And, and I think when you look at it through that lens, uh, the choices become really clear to me. Um, if you're honest with yourself and you have some degree of self-awareness, understand what you care about, I think choices become a lot clearer. Like there's way, way more clarity about how to live your life um, in, in the micro, which is really what we're talking about. It's just mini choices throughout the day. Does it does it does it support who you want to be in the world or does it not? And and there's very little gray actually, and the gray are excuses in in my view, and and we can rationalize and make stuff up, you know, all day long, right? To 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 make ourselves feel better, but when you can step back from all of that and look at it, really, you know, taking yourself kind of out of the equation and look at it from a, a very objective standpoint, um, you know. I think a choice like alcohol becomes very clear. But it helps me to socialize, Kristen. Yeah, if if you need alcohol to bond or to, you know, form a connection, there's probably something else going on that is unaddressed in from my perspective. Is there such a thing as such a small dose of alcohol? Mm. that it doesn't matter, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on who you are. Um, and I, th- I think there's a lot of individual variability there as as well. I know restrer- resveratrol is is something that's talked about a lot. And there's, uh, you know, I suppose there's in wine and grapes, there's resveratrol, and that's been linked to um, enhanced uh, health and, and well-being, but I think you'd have to drink like ten bottles or something to get the amount of respir- respiratory to actually make a <laughs> um, uh, to to make a dent. I, I don't think that's the argument. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know that really any amount of alcohol is is going to be is going to be helpful. And we know from the literature that just one to two drinks per week uh, will can have you know negative implications um, on on health. So. Um, it's actually, I don't know that any, like even in a moderate amount of alcohol is good for you. What's the implications for our circadian rhythms that we've been talking about? Yeah, it's mainly because it impacts sleep. It's going to impact when you go to bed and when you wake up. Um, so I think that's the biggest, the biggest impact. And I think, again, when we go back to melatonin, um, you know, it's when you're disrupting that, that sleep onset offset, um, that's going to, uh, obviously have all, all the downstream negative effects that we, we've we already spoken about. So I suppose if we're drinking, you know, we're staying out later, so we're exposing ourselves to, to light. Um, so yeah, there's lots of, uh, we're going to be eating later. Uh, there's other um, behaviors that accompany drinking that kind of, you know, pile on the, the negative effects. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.